So we're on part five of the uh, linear function review or linear function introduction. There's more things about linear functions we'll be doing later, but uh, uh, just kind of going over some of the basics that we maybe worked on before if you're in my class. So the last things we're going to look at are these two things right here. We're finding the slope of a line from a graph, and then we're going to find it from the slope. So at, at some time you're going to be uh, working along here, and We'll, we'll give you a graph of some sort, and we'll say, hey, would you please tell me the slope of that line? And the slope means nothing more than how tilted it is. And so I would say, well, the, the, um, the green line has a bigger slope than the orange line. Okay? And then if, if the line happens to go uh, down across the graph, we'd say it's got a negative slope. Now, we're going to be more specific about that as we go along. But I want, you to, I want you to picture this. The whole idea with slope is this. Okay? If I have a, um, let me try to make some room here. If I've got a house that I'm looking at the roof on, okay, uh, you might describe that as being a, a somewhat steep roof. If it, was, if it was in a place where they have a lot of snow, they might make a steeper roof like that, and we'd say that roof has a, a bigger pitch. Okay. Well, when you look at roofs, uh, they always talk about uh, the, the pitch in terms of 12s. Okay. And here's what they mean. If you've got your house looking like this, and let's say you've got a roof that goes down across it like this. If it was 12 feet, from there to there, okay, if that's 12 feet, then we would say this is a 512 pitch because for every 12 feet over, it goes up 5. Okay, uh, If it was a 312 pitch, okay, then we'd have a smaller number here. Okay, so you can imagine a, a, a roof with a really steep pitch might have a 14 or 15 12 pitch. Okay, but the, the whole idea of the pitch of the roof is very similar to what we're going to be looking at with slope. So I want to take you over here to uh, to look at some, some graphs here. Oops, not that one. Okay. Uh, here's, a, uh, here's a line, and uh, this is a, a, a tool I built in uh, a website called GeoGebra. It's kind of handy. I can show it to you sometime. But uh, uh, here's the idea. If I move these points around, okay, uh, you can see that the, uh, the pitch of the line is changing. Okay, now, what, you're, what you'll notice here is that uh, it's, it's telling you some information. It's telling you how far the, uh, the line goes uh, vertically and how far it goes horizontally. And then we describe those, those two things as the rise of the line and the run of the line. Okay, so I'm going to copy this drawing over here so that we can mess with it a little bit. Just copy all that. And then this thing's telling me what we call the rise. Let me draw that in on here. Yep, I lost my line. There it is. Okay. The rise, in this case, is 6, and the run is 9. So it labels how much it rises and how much it runs. And then over here, it's telling me the slope is 2 thirds. Well, what does that mean? Okay. Well, we always tell the slope as being the rise divided by the run. Okay. So the rise divided by the run, in this case, is 6 divided by 9. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to write that 6 divided by 9. Well, now you might be able to see this thing is calling it slope of 2 thirds because it just reduced the fraction. So anytime you see the, the slope, you can uh, look at it and say, well, that must be the rise divided by the run, and it's always reduced. So in this case, it's 8 divided by 6, which reduces to 4 thirds. Okay. 
And, uh, and there it's 7 divided by 6. That didn't need to be reduced. Well, some interesting questions come up. What happens if the line is tilted back the other way? Well, let's move it back over here. Okay. Now you can see it's labeled the, uh, the rise still as 5 and the run is negative 7. Well, the rise divided by the run would be 5 over negative 7 or just negative 5 sevenths. And honestly, it doesn't make a difference whether you decided to, to think about the rise being uh, positive and the run being negative or the reverse of that. You could have said, well, the, the rise is negative 5 and the run is positive 7, which still gives you a slope of negative 5 sevenths. So you can move the thing around here. Here's one that's, that's 3 divided by negative 9 or reduces to negative 1 third. So uh, the uh, directions here say, ask the question, what happens if the line is vertical or horizontal? Well, let's make it horizontal first. Okay. It says the slope is 0. Okay. Well, it's got a rise of 0, okay, and it's running 10 or negative 10. It'd be, uh, uh, it'd be positive if you put, put it over here. It's just the way that the website is built. Okay. So it's still got a slope of 0 here. So, uh, so if, if it uh, doesn't have any rise, we say it's got a slope of zero. Well, what happens if you make the thing vertical? Okay, well, notice I'm getting closer and closer to vertical. Okay, uh, so here it's, it's, it's going to be a really big number, but if you go right to here where it's truly vertical, all of a sudden it says the slope is infinity. What? Okay, well, I'm going to make a copy of this, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here it is copied over on the screen where I can write on it. And uh, what I want you to notice is this. Again, we do the, the, we call the slope the rise divided by the run. Okay, in this case, notice from point A up to point B, the rise was 12. Okay, what was the run? Well, it didn't go left or right at all. It just went straight up. So the run would be zero. Well, this, uh, uh, you may remember from uh, your previous work, you cannot divide by zero. You can divide zero all you want. Zero divided by anything is still zero, but you can't divide by zero. So we would typically say the slope here is undefined. Okay. But the software I was using to make this, as soon as you tried to divide by zero, it just called it infinity because uh, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger when the denominator gets smaller. And so it became in infinity when it was uh, uh, dividing by zero. So the best thing to do is say the slope if, uh, for a vertical line is undefined. So when you're back over here at a uh, uh, working on say um, delta math and they're asking you questions like what's the slope here? If you get a vertical one uh, there, there may be a button down below that says undefined. Okay. If you get a horizontal one, the slope is going to be zero. Okay. So the question comes up, well, how does this work with delta math? Uh, how do you enter these? Well, it says draw lines that represent the rise and a line that represents the run of the line. Okay. Then state the slope in the simplest form. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And uh, I want to find some point that, it, that the line seems to go through that I can identify. And I say, well, you know what? It goes through right there. So I'm going to pick a point there, and then I'm going to make a line, actually they should call it a segment, that represents the rise. Okay, and then I'm going to make another one. I'll click right here and go over here that represents the run. Okay, so uh, in order to do this thing successfully, you, you need to make those two segments. One goes straight up, and the other one goes straight over. Okay, so now the slope is the rise divided by the run. Okay, I paused and got a little keyboard here, so now I can type in the rise, which was 3. Check that. Yep, the rise was 3, and divided by the run, which is 1. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, do I really need to put in 3 divided by 1, uh, since uh, 3 divided by 1 is just 3? And actually, no, you don't. I think you can still submit that answer, and let's see what it says. But yeah, you're, you're good to go with that. Okay, so let's look at a new problem. With, with this one, if you zoom in, you got to find two points that it goes through here. And how about these two right here? Okay. Or you could use any two you want. In fact, I think I'll do that. I'll go do that two, that one, and say that one. 
and then that one to that one. So now I've got a rise of 4 and a run of 4, which would make my slope 4 over 4 or just 1. Okay. And we got a green check mark. Okay. So let's get a new one here. Uh, that one's boring. Let's get a new one. Another one. Yeah, there we go. Just a good negative one. So, first I need to find two points that it seems to go through. And how about uh, that one and that one? So, I'm going to click here and then go straight down until I'm even with the other one. And then here and go straight over. So, now my rise is a negative number and my run is a positive number. So, I'm going to have a negative slope, negative 1 over 3. Okay? If you didn't want those, if you wanted to get rid of the segments there and say, look, I want to go over here and then down. Oops. Okay. Now you've got a run of positive 3 and a, and a rise of negative 1, or you can think of it as a positive rise and a negative run, either way you want to do it. Okay. But either way, you're going to get a slope of negative 1 third. So let's go down here to our input box. And let's see, negative sign, 1 divided by 3. Submit answer. Yep. And look for a green check box. Okay. So that's how you're going to do those. And if you're in my class, you might want to pause right here and go and do the first part of the Delta Math assignment where you're asked to, do, uh, to find the slope on a graph and then come back to this and watch the rest of it about how to find the slope if you don't have a graph, if you just have two points. So uh, what we're going to do, though, is go on and look. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you find the slope if you're just given two points? So like if I have the point 3, 8 and the point... 5, 11. How do I do that? Well, of course, one option is to go to the graph and move the points around to those, those places. Let's go to 3, 8 right here. Uh, no, that's 3, 6. 3, 8 right there. And the other one was 5, 11, I think. So 5, 11. Okay. And then look at it and say, well, all right, I guess the, the slope is 3 over 2. Okay, so that's one option. But it's not a very nice option, especially if the points were actually something like uh, 17 and 214 and negative 32 and 90. Well, that's going to get pretty ugly to try to do that uh, on a graph. And so here's what I want to do. I, I want to uh, take a, a new set of points and put them on the graph uh, so that we can, we can mess with them. Let's just go with three... Uh, 6 and um, 9, 8. Okay, so 3, 6 and 9, 8. Let's go back to, the, to our graph here and put them there. 3, 6. There's 3, 6 and 9, 8. Okay, and I can see on the graph that the slope is... Um, is two sixths or one third. Now, what I'm going to do is copy this over here to our page. Okay, here it is. Well, I want you to look at this here. This is the point three six. Okay, this is the point nine eight. Okay. And I want you to think about this. How far is it from here straight up to there? Okay, well. This is at a height of 6, and that's at a height of 8. So you could just subtract those numbers to get the rise. Okay? In other words, you could take the numbers for the y-coordinates and get the rise. Okay? And then over here, how far did it run? Well, it was a, it was a distance of 6 to a distance of 9. I'm sorry, a distance of 3 over to a distance of 9 over, that's a difference of 6. And you could have gotten that number by subtracting the x-coordinates. Okay, So what I ended up doing was saying, you know what, if I just want to calculate the rise, I'm going to subtract the y-coordinates. In fact, you'll hear me say in class oftentimes, to get the rise, subtract the y's. Okay, subtract the y coordinates. Okay, to get the run, subtract the x coordinates. Okay, so what you'll see oftentimes 
is people will write something like this. Okay. Slope is rise over run. To get the rise, you'll subtract the y coordinates. And the up and down, you'll see this y2 minus y1. And to get the run, you'll subtract the x coordinates, x2 minus x1. Well, what do these mean? Well, the 2 and 1 are just uh, uh, name tags in a sense. If you've got the points, uh, say, 5, 9, and 11, 16, oftentimes they'll say, all right, look, let's just say the 5 is the first x coordinate and the 9 is the first y coordinate, so x1 and y1. And the 11 is the second x coordinate, and the 16 is the second y coordinate. Okay. So, so the basic idea was this to get the rise, subtract the y coordinates. Okay. To get the run, subtract the x coordinates. Okay. So when you're, when you're calculating these, all you're doing is subtracting the y's subtracting the x's, writing it as a fraction, and you're good to go. So what is 16 minus 9? Okay, that's going to be 7. Okay, 11 minus 5 is going to be 6. That gives you a slope of 7 sixths. Okay, let's do another one. So how about we've got the point negative 8, 15, and 4, negative 3. Okay, well, it honestly doesn't make a difference which one you say is y1 and y2. Oftentimes people will say, look, the first one is y1, the second one's y2. But either way, subtract them. Okay, that's the uh, that's the rise because that's the difference in y's. Okay, and uh, then these are the x coordinates. Okay, so subtract those. 4 minus negative 8. Okay, you'll have to be careful with your arithmetic there. So negative 3 minus 15 is negative 18. And 4 minus 8 is the same. Sorry, 4 minus negative 8 is the same thing as 4 plus 8. So 12. And those can both be divided by 6. So we'll write that as negative 3 over 2. And there's our answer. Okay? So be careful when you're doing these things uh, that, you, uh, that you deal with the... the um, uh, x and y coordinates correctly. Some people will ask, well, wait, what if you'd subtracted the other direction? Instead of doing the 15 minus negative, I'm sorry, the negative 3 minus 15, if you'd started with 15 minus negative 3, well, no problem. If you want to start on the left and go subtract the y's, 15 minus negative 3, no problem. Just do negative 8 minus 4 for the bottom. Let's see what we get. Well, 15 minus negative 3 is 18. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. This can still be top and bottom divided by 6. So I'm going to put the negative out front and write 3 over 2. So you got the same answer either way. So the, the big takeaway on that is to, to get the, uh, the rise, you're going to subtract the, the y's. You'll put that on top because that's the rise. So we do rise over run. To get the run, you'll subtract the x-coordinates. Okay. And then write your numbers in, calculate correctly, and you're good to go. Okay. So there, another question comes up. What happens if you're looking at one on the graph and it looks like this? Okay. You might notice that the x-coordinates are the same uh, number. In other words, if we were graphing these things, negative 8, 5 might be here, and negative 8, 7 might be there. This is going to be a vertical line. So what are you going to get? Well, to get the rise, subtract the y's, so 7 minus 5. To get the run, subtract the x's, negative 8 minus negative 8. Okay, so 2 divided by negative 8 minus negative 8 is 0. Oh, look at that. Undefined. Same thing happens if you get uh, something with the same y coordinates. If you have four nine or five nine and uh, six, let's call it sixteen nine. Okay. Well, these two points are the same height. If you look at the graph over here, five nine might be here and sixteen nine might be there. They're the same height, so you're going to get a horizontal line. 
Let's see what happens. Subtract the y's, 9 minus 9. Subtract the x's, 16 minus 5. You get 0 over negative 21. Well, 0 divided by anything is 0, so your slope is 0. Okay, so I hope that helps you figure out how to do the, uh, the graphing points on a, I'm sorry, uh, finding the slope either from a graph or from two points.